All right, Brett, going into your second draft as general manager of the Chiefs, just what did you learn last year and just how do you feel about the preparation that uh, you and your staff have gone through this year? Yeah, I think every year you learn uh, something different. It was, it was, It's always difficult when you don't have a first round pick. So fortunately for us this year, we have a, a one and two twos, but you know, we're excited about where we are in this process. Uh, I, have a, I have a great staff and I've been with these guys since 2013. So they're kind of like family to me, but those guys have been on the road since August, been busting their tail and been to the their schools two, three, sometimes four times uh, throughout the course of the year. They, they've logged a lot of information on a lot of players and uh, we had a chance to, to meet before the combine, after the combine. They've been to a bunch of pro days, a bunch of all-star games and uh, um, I, I think we've accumulated a, a lot of information. I think we're ready to go. Now, we've talked a lot over the years. I'm just curious, I don't think I've ever asked you this question of what's your favorite aspect of like draft weekend like what's your favorite part of that process well i, I always think the uh, a cool aspect of the whole weekend is really after that first day there's a lot of build up for that first day but you know when the first day comes and goes there's a lot of surprises and then to come back in for day two and to kind of reset that board is is certainly fun and exciting and it also gives you time to really strategize your moves and have a lot of dialogue dialogue with other gms and other teams so it, to me i think day two is really um probably the most fun I have throughout the course of the weekend. You talked about surprises. How often are you surprised when you see what other teams do based on like where your board is? Does that happen a lot or in the top rounds is it all pretty similar? Just curious. Yeah, I think for the most part, the top 10 to 20 picks are, are pretty consistent um, throughout the league. But I think once you hit rounds two and three, then you really see the, the different philosophies and the different takes. So it doesn't surprise me because I think you go in there looking for specific things for your team that maybe other teams aren't necessarily looking for. But yeah, once you get past the first 20, 25 picks, it gets it gets exciting. I'm curious, I'm gonna blame the movie Draft Day for this question right now, but I think the work that you guys do leading up to the draft when it comes to trades and the compensation to move up, to move down, obviously there's communication during the draft, but how much of the just the framework of what is possible to do is done ahead of time. So when you get the draft, you kind of know about what, what you're looking at to go wherever you want to be. Yeah. I, you know. The Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday before the draft, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that every GM talks to every other GM. I've already talked to a handful already, but I think what you do is you go through you know, situations, and the hard part is you, know, you don't know what players are gonna be there. So really, you're just talking about if you wanted to move up, what it would take, or, and if you were okay with moving down, what you'd be looking for. So I think it's, it's good to have two or three days before the draft to, to reach out to some other teams and just get parameters on value and, and what it would cost cost to move up and what you're looking for to move back. But I think all teams have that dialogue before the draft, so they're prepared. So you're not just, like in the movie, you're not just trading multiple first round picks and then doing background? Yeah, no, well, <laughs> yeah, no, you, you're, you, you tend to have all that kind of hashed out before you're actually on the clock. But there's a lot of work involved and, and there's a lot of dialogue that you have throughout, uh, with other teams throughout the week. Can you just take me through the process on draft day? You're, you're 10 or 15 picks before you want to go. And I know you have guys like pockets like you talked about uh, where guys are going to be. But just what's the process of what you guys are communicating in that room, maybe 10, 12 picks before you guys are up? Yeah, you're just looking for that, that pocket of players that are, are still available. In an ideal setup, uh, when you're 10 picks away, you know, you hope to have, you know, four or five of those guys on the board. So your mind's constantly, you know, keeping uh, an eye on, on who's on the clock and, and where you have to be. But you also know that if you get to your pick and those guys are gone, you know, you have to have teams lined up to potentially trade back because I don't think every team has an infinite un amount of players that they'll take at that pick. So you want to have, obviously, uh, as high as number as possible, but at the same time, you know, you need to be in touch with teams to be able to trade out of that pick if, if any of those players aren't available. You've joked a lot about being aggressive and that everybody kind of knows it and it's, we've talked about the combine, wherever it is. Yeah. Do other GMs like give you a hard time? Like, do you joke with them about that, knowing yeah. that you're aggressive and you always want to come up? Do you get that when you're communicating with them? No, I don't get that so much, but I think you can tell because uh, there's a lot of teams that call me um, because they know I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I won't shy away from a deal. But look, that goes back to the um, to the players we have, to the head coach we have, and to the staff I have. I mean, when you surround yourself with with a great coaching staff and a great personnel staff, I mean, you feel confident in, in what you're valuing, and you feel confident in what you need and, and what you want. And and so I think that's where the aggressiveness comes from. But I don't know if it's me in general, but more of a cumulative effect of the people I have around me. How long have you been ready to get this draft going? Uh, I mean, since uh, the New England game. I mean, you know. It, <laughs> Literally after that game, we were in the draft room, um, you know, and we had watched guys all year. But I mean, as soon as that game's over, I mean, you initially turn uh, the page and you're ready for for the 19th season. We were very close to Super Bowl, and and 
Um, we're just looking to put the final touches on this roster to help get our players, coaches, and community a Super Bowl here. You work on that draft board. I know you tinker with it um, going back to the combine and you kind of place guys and then kind of move guys around a little bit. Uh, just how did that board shape up and what stands out to you about this group of players? I think it's um, it's been well documented. I think there, it's really deep on the defensive line. I think there's also some depth on, on the offensive line early on. And I think once you get into the middle rounds, I think receiver tight end are deep in rounds two, three, and four. Same could be said for the corner class. So, you know, it, there is, there's talent throughout the board and it's just a matter of being disciplined and being able to navigate in either direction. One of the biggest changes for this team in the offseason was on the defensive side, just a whole new coaching staff with Steve Spagnuolo, you know, a guy that you've, you're familiar with and worked with in the past. How has that process been, not just with you communicating with Steve on what he wants, but communicating that to all of your staff and then their staff as well with the position coaches, what they like, because that's a, a much bigger process than, than people may realize. Yeah, no, it, it is. And it's been it's been really good. And you know, Steve has a lot of energy and, and you know, I, I bounce around all day. So Steve has been in and out of my office uh, since he got here, bouncing ideas and we've been discussing players. He has a great staff. I mean, uh, Coach Merritt, Coach House, Coach Madison, Coach Daly. I mean, these guys have a ton of energy and, um, you know, they're excited about the process and they know that we're enabling them to, to, to have a lot of dialogue with us. And, you know, we, you know, we certainly push for open communication and the dialogue has been outstanding. I think it's really going to allow us to hit the ground running. Reed's always joked about you nagging him about players, and I'm not asking you to name the names, yeah. but have there been guys that you kind of nag him about this year or that you would pound the table? Yeah, with? yeah, I mean, every year you're going to have, uh, it's hard not to watch so many players and, and to not have your, your handful of favorites, so, um, you know, rest assured that there's been uh, some some backroom conversations of, of guys I like on both sides of the football, but again, they're, they're guys that, that not only I like, but our staff likes and our, and our coaches like, so I think once you get into that um, position where everyone kind of is excited about the same handful of players, um, you know, then, then coach hears about it for sure. Final question, is it, what's it like for you, particularly on Thursday night, to make that call, to, to tell the guy he's the next member of the Chiefs and to fulfill a lifelong dream for him? Just what does that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a special moment. It, it's super exciting. I mean, this is, um, you know, an individual that we have scouted for years. I mean, sometimes their whole college career. And, you know, you get to know the guy extremely well and you know what that call not only does for you, your roster, your community, but also that that's a call that's gonna change someone's life. So it's certainly a very special time and uh, it's equally as exciting for us as it is for them. Awesome, can we go check out your draft board now? Yeah, let's do it. All right. <laughs>